everybody and welcome to the next section or module of the NPTEL online certification course on CMOS digital VLSI design and uh, this is the sequential logic design module number 2. If you remember in the previous module, uh, we had discussed the various aspects of sequential logic design and how is it different from combinational logic and we also saw that sequential logic can be analogous to a memory uh, design because if you remember in the sequential logic the current state of output depends not only on the current state of input as was in the combinational logic, but it also depends on the previous state of the inputs. So, you need to you need to know the previous state and therefore, in time domain you are actually trying to uh, store a particular kind of input for a at least one clock period of time. And that is where the concept of memory comes into picture and therefore, there is a feedback loop as I discussed with you in the previous turn that you will have a combinational logic and then there will be a feedback loop connected to the combinational logic through a register. Uh, this register will have certain amount of delay and so, the input at t equals to 0 at t equals to 1 let us suppose uh, will be there plus input at t minus 1 will be also there with you. Then the sequential logic will be able to take a call about the output. So, that what, what we learned yesterday in the previous turn, we also learned about certain things for example, certain definitions of sequential logic for example, setup time, hold time, contamination delay, uh, TCTQ delay and so on and so forth. Uh, we will start from where we left in the previous turn and try to explain to you the various aspects of sequential logic. Right. So, as I discussed with you in the previous turn and this is the diagram which is in front of you that you see here the first one is basically the, the, the clock here, the first one is the clock, this one is the clock right. Uh, clocks are assumed here to be having a finite, uh, it has been shown to have a finite rise and fall time right. As per our earlier definition in a clock, uh, if you look at a clock by my earlier definition a clock will have T r and T f which is given by uh, T f. So, T r is basically from uh, 0 to 90 percent or generally 10 to 90 percent of your uh, rise. So, 0 to V d d right and fall is again 90 to 10 percent of your. Uh, so, this is one of the definitions of rise and fall. So, this is how I define for a clock. Uh, in most of the cases we will assume that uh, you will have a finite rise. So, all my clocks will have finite uh, finite uh, rise and fall right, finite rise and fall. However, if you consider the clock to be as an ideal clock right, then you will have almost uh, T r equals to T f equals to 0. So, you will automatically get what you will get almost like a straight line rectangular pulses for a clock fine. Otherwise, what is shown here is basically like this and it is accentuated to give you an idea about how the clock will behave in, in, in reality right. So, that is the reason we have shown the clock in this manner and this is your high phase of the clock, this is high phase of the clock right and this is your low phase of the clock. So, I will have high and low phase of the clock available to me and uh, depending upon the state of the clock the data will be sampled or uh, will not be sampled. Now, if you look at this uh, diagram here the first part is basically the clock here which you see, this is the clock right, this is the clock which you see. In the clock you have obviously, uh, it is, this goes up to VDD of need not to say that and this is your low state and this is your high state which is there with you right. So, you have high and low state available with you. I discussed with you that setup time is defined as that time before the rising edge of the clock when the data must be held stable right. You cannot have a data which is fluctuating near the rising edge of the clock. If it is an edge triggered uh, which is basically a register an edge triggered design, edge triggered I discussed with you that whenever the clock is in a rising edge or a falling edge, if the data is accepted from an input and is evaluated we define that as a edge triggered design right or a edge triggered clock. So, when you have edge triggering which means that at the edge you are accepting data then exactly few units or few units of time before the rising edge of the clock or even the falling edge in case of negative edge triggered, your data must be held stable right. That minimum amount of time is basically defined as setup time right. As you can see therefore, see if you this is my data data here. So, data can be 1, 1 or 0 whatever it is, it does not matter. So, you see this is my approx approximately my clock half of the clock. So, this is basically 50 percent of the rising edge of the clock, this is 50 percent of the falling edge of the clock. So, around 50 percent of the clock before that 
this is my point before that your output should be or the data should be held stable right that is known as tsu or t setup when the clock so so this will help you to accept the data and keep you outside right and therefore you see this is the queue is the output so if you if you remember the previous day slide uh, if you remember I, I had a i had a feedback so it's, it's basically d to q right d to q and i had a clock given here right and i was feeding here and then this was going into a combinational logic here and this combinational logic block was feeding like this so this was the combinational logic block now you see uh, whatever data you are feeding at d will be transferred to q with a certain delay that delay is primarily because of the input because there will be gates inside which will be actually having some parasitic or intrinsic delay available to it so what i'm plan what i'm trying to tell you therefore is that your data should be held stable at least t su minutes or seconds or nanoseconds before the rising edge of the clock if it is held stable then only data is made available to you in the queue you see so it's a, it's a rising edge of the clock and you are your your queue queue value is having a particular value which you see here right and your queue value is there now i also define a new term here which is known as t hold right t hold is basically that once the rising edge of the clock has passed right or you you are in the rising edge of the clock when you are doing doing an edge triggering then the minimum time after the clock has passed till which the data must be held stable for actual output to be evaluated is defined by t hold so if you see this from here to here is basically my t hold which means my assuming that af after this point i am assuming that till this much point of the clock i have to actually have this stability condition available to me which means that this is the total time from this edge to this edge when your data has to be held stable and you cannot do anything uh, you cannot evaluate it if it is fluctuating very much right and this is one of the prime limitations of sequential logic the, therefore the prime limitation therefore is in the speed actually and therefore you cannot allow the data to come into a sequential system at any speed you desire right you have to have a data input speed such that you give a minimum time for the data to be stable between tsu and uh, t hold between the starting of tsu and the ending of s hold which is basically the holding time with this knowledge or with this idea let me explain to you what is basically known as uh, uh, t, uh, tcq or tcq is basically the the delay time so i i define here Mm, tcq which is also defined as tc to q delay which is from here is basically from the rising edge of the clock right when your data has been held stable to a time when your data is actually falling down which means that the data is again stable here right but it is falling down at this stage so you initially had uh, you init so, so your tcq delay is this is the time when your system is evaluating your data from d to q right and this is basically your tcq so if you look very carefully the capital t which is the time of the clock should be at least greater than tcq plus tp logic plus t setup i'll explain to you what is tcq i mean to say so tp logic is basically the logic of the combinational cell right because there will be some delay here also right that is some delay this delay plus this delay plus which is tcq this delay is the combinational logic and this delay is setup so you have to wait minimum this much amount of time before any output appears in front of you so your clock period capital t should be at least greater than or equal to at least this value right for proper evaluation if it is less than this value by virtue of a lower tc uh, setup delay or tcq delay or tp logic delay then you don't allow the output to be stable in the output side and you don't know what will be the value of the output for example i will give an example let us suppose your capital t is greater than is is equal to tcq plus tp logic plus t setup fine but i have lowered my t capital t just below the value of tp logic then what will happen is the combinational see there will be a minimum time which the combinational logical cell will take for giving you an output based on its boolean expression there will be some finite delay of the gates through which the critical path will be defined you have to give that much amount of at least time for the combinational logic cell to react right and that is the reason why t should be greater than equal to this this value which you, which you see in front of me right so this is this is the reason why you require this one conditions to be holding good let us look at the second condition right the second condition is after the clock has accepted the data right after the clock has accepted the data your tcd register cd register explained to you and tcd logic which is basically the logic 
uh, the boolean expression which which is kept there you are basically solving it and you are getting the delay because of the logic gates this plus uh, the register in which you are storing the data so you have logic is the upper one which is the combinational logic delay and tcd register is basically the uh, the the delay at the shift register or the register kept in the feedback loop if you add these two delay that should be greater than or equal to whole time why because if it is less than the whole time then your data will fluctuate even before the whole time has actually appeared you're getting my point so if you if you look very closely this is my whole time right and this is the time when the data has to be held stable but then if this condition is not met right then you are in a problem that your data might change even before the whole time comes and therefore this inequality will not be valid and your data will be unevenly spread so there are two basic conditions which one needs to be very very careful about that t must be greater than equal to tcq plus tp logic right plus t setup right and tcd register right plus tcd your logic must be greater than equal to t hold if you sustain these two conditions one and two you automatically get the perfect picture of a sequential logic this the first condition which you see condition number 1 is actually responsible for fixing the frequency of a sequential logic right so people are trying to do it and they are trying to actually lower the setup time tp logic as well as tcq tcq is the delay between c and q within the combinational logic block in the sequential logic block and tp logic is a uh, logic cell design which you see in front of you uh, after after this part where you have actually got this thing your data is again held stable so your data should be stable here this is the part this is the part where you are stabling because in any case you see that this is positive edge triggered so nothing is happening in the negative part so you see a data so in the negative edge so in the negative uh, edge edge of the clock uh, edge of the clock nothing happens and you therefore data is held stable and your output is exactly following the input uh, here right and when when this will again happen this will again happen at least one clock delay so when the next rising edge of the clock comes you will actually see a change uh, available to you fine so i wanted to stress this point as far as uh, uh, stability is concerned or for that matter a clock is concerned now uh, the idea here is that and, and that's the reason you always need to have a stable data be beyond a particular limit right and that sets the limit of the frequency so the frequency of the operational output is basically 1 by t which you get and therefore that sets the uh, operational limit of design so once we have so i hope you have understood the basic concept of tcq uh, tc register tcd logic we have also understood the meaning of t setup and t hold right and how they are related to the maximum frequency of operation of a sequential logic right uh, we will be giving you numerical examples during the assignments which will be also helping you to clarify these issues in a much more detailed manner uh, let me therefore come to the classification of memory we had already done this part that uh, uh, if you have if you have therefore if you look with very very carefully the the register which i was discussing in the previous turn uh, previous part the register which was holding this data this capital d was basically behaving as a simple register uh, simple memory right so a single register uh, will be acting behaving like a simple memory design but this is basically your foreground memory right these are all foreground memory so if you look at the foreground difference between the foreground and background memory so you like that memory that is embedded into the logic is the foreground memory right which means that this memory uh, though is not primarily utilized as memory is actually utilized as logic but it also works as a memory right so the, it is often uh, for example individual registers or register banks right right and we will discuss this as we move along for example there there are four types of shift registers and you actually can store a data uh, till certain clock period of time for example if you are uh, doing an 8 bit shift register right then you will be storing 8 bits of data uh, over a clock period 8 clock periods of time so on and so forth so you can actually do that whereas uh, large centralized memory are referred to as background memory for example static ram sram static random access memory uh, these are actually based on uh, most of them are based on 60 design we will not go into details at this stage we will do a separate module for that but we have got foreground memory which is primarily by virtue of the registers which you are having these are embedded in the logic itself so you have a big logic and embedded within that you have these uh, you have these memories right and therefore they are known as foreground memories and we have the background memories which are very large in dimensions 
and they can store large uh, bit of data and they are basically your background memory right ok. Uh, now, uh, uh, the static memory uh, preserve, uh, so let us look at the static and dynamic memory difference. Static memory is actually preserve the state as long as the power is on and so when you, when you switch for example, you take a shift register you or, or the register which you are discussing till now, you switch off the power and your data is just gone right. That is not true in case of, uh, of, of other memories right and in other memories for example, your background memory right. For example, your SRAM cell or even that matter your hard disk available in your computer which are basically your background memory or even your flash memory which is available in your pen drives. They are all uh, memories which are basically uh, they, they preserve their state even when the power is off right. So, you must have heard of volatile memory and non volatile memory right. So, one is a volatile memory means when you switch off the power everything goes off. For example, your static memories are all volatile memories and they go off. Whereas, when you talk about non volatile memories you are talking basically of all your all your memory cards the whole range of uh, hard disks portable hard disks so on and so forth. So, these are all static memories and they work very fine. Now, what is the dynamic memory? Dynamic memory is basically a memory which stores for a small period of time and then it forgets. So, irrespective of the value of the voltage available to it, it does not depend on that prime of AC. It the, so, so, dynamic memories store data for a short period of time typically with the order of milliseconds and then they uh, move off. You will ask me where it is used, they are generally used in those places where you can you you need to you need to extract the data and you need to store the data for a very short period of time right and you just have to do a computation with that right and that will be quite useful when we do a dynamic memory design right so we have therefore understood two important points one is the foreground and background memory foreground memory is basically embedded in the logic for example a shift register and uh, background memory is primarily a 60 sram cell which is primarily uh, in the background of the system and can store large large bits of data we have also understood static memory and dynamic memory right and these two are different types of memory which is available to us for our practical use ok. Let me therefore, before you move further give you a differentiation between what are known as latches and registers right. Uh, uh, just important point is latch is a level sensitive and register is edge sensitive in terms of clock. Uh, I will explain to you what do I mean, what do I mean by uh, what do I mean by level sensitive and uh, and edge uh, uh, sensitive. See, if, if you have a clock here, these are all synchronous design. These are not asynchronous at this stage. We, uh, synchronous means that your data is synchronous with the clock. So whenever the clock is available, the data the the the, the system accepts the, accepts the data during certain periods of clock and in certain periods of clock it does not accept the data. Then we define that to be as a synchronous design with respect to the clock. So, data is synchronous with respect to clock. You can also have a sequential logic where there is no clock, where there is only where there might be a clock, but the data is coming independent of the clock right and your data is just behaving like a like a asynchronous. Then at that time we define that to be as an asynchronous logic design or asynchronous sequence sequential circuits. Let me discuss with you the concept of latch right. So, I have a latch here and uh, and uh, a register right. So, I will just discuss the difference between the two and explain to you what do I mean by that. You see this clock has got two parts this clock has got edge. So, this is known as positive edge as I discussed with you and this is actually known as right a negative edge. So, I have got this to be as edge 1 let us just to give you an idea edge 2. So, I have got edge 1 and edge 2 this is edge 1 and I have got edge 2 here right this is edge, edge, edge 2 right and you have a level here level means the clock is high. This is 0 to 1 transition this is 1 to 0 transition, but this is the place where the clock is high and this is the place where the clock is low right it is 0 this and this and this and this are all referred to as level of the clock and this and this and this and this and this and this are all referred to as edge of the clock right. So, whenever you are sampling the data at the edge of the clock then we define that to be as a register 
right. So, if you are sampling the data at this point or at this point or at this point or at this point, we define that to be as the register. Sampling means you are accepting the data for uh, for uh, its uh, this thing for computation, right. Whereas, the, 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 that is known as register. Whereas, and therefore, we refer to those, those as, as, as uh, your edge trigger as I will explain to you. Uh, yes, see edge trigger registers are the only sample inputs of the clock transition that is 0 to 1 for a positive edge trigger and 1 to 0 for negative edge trigger. Am I clear? That therefore, edge triggering can have at 2 within the same clock period can have 2 uh, can have 2 means it is basically 0 to 1 then it is positive if it is 1 to 0 it is negative. So, if I do like this, this, this and this I can have actually one edge triggering done here 1, 2, 3 right. So, in a single clock period I can actually do a once I can do a, a edge triggering. Whereas, what is level triggering and they are used in register level triggering is when your output levels are actually fixed to either high or low at that point of time the sam the data is sampled inside then we define that to be as a latch right. So, let me give you a difference uh, let me give you what I am trying to say a, a latch is a level sensitive circuit that passes the input to the output when the clock signal is high right then the latch is said to be in a transparent transparent mode which means that when my clock signal is high if the latch is able to transmit my data from input to output we define that to be as a level sensitive design primarily a latch right you can also pass it at low values of 0 so don't worry if it is 1 it can pass even if it is 0 if if, if it passes so uh, don't worry about that but that's a latch what's a what's a it's edge sensitive is this is what you get in edge sensitive and therefore it's a register i will give you a difference between a positive latch and a negative latch so if you look at the diagram this is my positive latch and this is my negative latch positive latch is a latch which allows the data to be transparent or allows the latch to be transparent when the clock is high so you see you have a clock cycle like this then it goes like this then this and then this is it okay so when the clock is when the clock is high this is the point where the clock is high if you very carefully see then your output exactly follows the input you see the output exactly follows. So, if you look from this point onwards and if you see look at this point the output exactly follows the input and your latch is exactly transparent to the clock. So, when the clock is high I define this to be the positive latch fine, but then you have to also ensure by my previous definitions that there will be some setup time setup time before which the data must be he held good and there will be hold time before after the clock pulse which will allow you to uh, hold the clock. So, that is the reason your, your in input has to be stable uh, before the falling or before the falling edge of the clock or even before the if it is basically if you are doing a negative edge triggering you will have these these being done right. Now, if, if you and therefore, when the clock when the latch is not transparent what it will do is the output will be held stable. Why it will be held stable? Because it does not depend upon the data which is coming in. Whatever the initial value of data was initially stored before which means that whatever the value of data it was storing here right uh, uh, sorry. So, uh, what what so, uh, so, when the clock is low in this case you have a positive latch therefore, when the clock is low your system is uh, not transparent and therefore, th input is not equal to output, but the output holds the last state of your transparency which means that it su suppose it, it went high right as it went high right because of this increasing input here after this you have already crossed to cross to a place where your clock is low and when the clock is low the data is held stable. So, the last value of your uh, the previous cycle will be actually stored as the fixed value for the next cycle when the latch is low. So, this is the case when you have a positive latch. So, I have a D, I have a D right and uh, I have a, I have D here right, I have Q. So, this is where and I have a clock here which I am giving it. So, I have an input and output right. Now, let us look at the negative latch right which is in front of you in this diagram on the right hand side of your picture. Whenever we saw when we, whenever we want to show a negative latch we generally give a circle in front of clock right, right. When 
Yes, so, please understand when, when, whenever you want to do, uh, I will just give you certain things, just important things to at this stage, it will be helpful for you in the longer run. That if you have a latch and you are driving a latch using gate, uh, using a clock, then you just simply write C L K. So, this if you do not write anything here, it is basically a positive latch, right. But if you want to show a negative latch, then you need to give a clock, but you need to ensure that your clock is ending in a ball. So, whenever you show like this, this is basically a negative latch. So, this is a negative latch and this is a positive latch. So, there is a circle here. When you do an edge triggering, edge triggering and if you want to give a positive clock, then you give a positive clock here and you just do not say anything C L K, but then you give a small, this is the concept of edge triggering, you give a small notch there. And if you want to do a negative edge triggering, this is, this is the positive edge triggering. If you do a negative edge triggering, then you have to you have to show that there will be this, this, but then this will be terminating. So, this is the clock. So, if you have a circle like this, you consider that to be as a negative clock, and if you have a you do not have a circle, then it is a positive clock. But if you have a triangle like this, it is edge triggered, nothing, it is latch. So, uh, you just have to look at the diagram and see whether one is a negative edge triggered or a positive edge triggered and how, how does it work out right. So, let us look at the negative edge trigger here. In the negative latch uh, as I discussed with you, in the negative half of my clock, when the clock is in the negative half, your system is transparent. So, it is the negative half of the clock and therefore, output here exactly follows the input here right. So, this is equal to this. So, in equals to out at clock equals to 0 and that is what is happening here. So, this this part is exactly the same and then when the clock goes high, your data is held stable to the initial value of, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the input and it is, it is held stable right. So, the initial value is held stable in negative latch similarly happens in the positive latch. So, we have understood what is the negative edge triggered, positive edge triggered, we have also understood what is negative latch and positive latch right and we have understood the difference between the two latches and how does it how does it work as such in these two latches domain. This we will take up in the next module, uh, at this stage I thank you for the patient hearing, thank you.